Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Just writing some release notes. And then I think I'm done for today. So no Felix today, Timothy is joining, and then we'll see whether anyone else joins. Yeah. Uh, do you know what happened to Carl? Uh, I don't remember. He stopped joining now for two weeks. Was he on vacation or? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, somebody just asked, is just asking me for a meeting at the, at the next hour, so. I now have a hard stop. Damn it. <laughs> well, that's good. It's Friday. <laughs> well, yeah. for me, it's Friday, meaning I shouldn't work too late. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the beer ready? <laughs> Is the beer cold? I, I already had one. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I know the Dutch tradition is pretty light beers. Are you into light or li lagers or ales? I'm Belgian, so I'm into all beers. Uh, oh, you're Belgian. Oh, yeah. yes. OK, of course. <laughs> That's much better than the Flemish. That, sorry, the, the, the Flemish is much better than, than the, Dutch, yeah. than the Dutch tradition. <laughs> But uh, there's good microbreweries popping up all over the world now. Well, at least of in course. capital city, so it's quite nice. Yes. Um, I miss, I so miss the variety of the beer scene. Now that I'm gluten-free, I my choice oof. is ridiculously restricted. Yeah, although there, 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 there's some good gluten. There's good ones. There's there, good there, ones. There's at least a offering nowadays. In the past, you, you didn't have a choice. Now, now you can or, choose. Or, or, or only horrible things for a long time. Yeah. No, no. There's actually a brilliant gluten-free microbrewery right here in Montreal. Mm. There, there's really good stuff, but it's it. I cannot go. Oh, let me sample this and that and this and that as I used to. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. I, I went to Montreal. I think two years ago three years ago, I don't remember, uh, to visit a friend of mine. And yeah, the, the microbrew beer selection in the shops there, it's quite nice. It's, we have, we have good microbreweries. Mm. This was a so, high temp. We got into a thank God it's Friday theme, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're waiting for our benevolent dictator for the day. Or am I the benevolent? No, who's the benevolent? Am you I? Are. We switch days. Oh, we switch days, so you are. Uh, whatever. Uh, it's <laughs> a continuation of what we were doing, right? Yeah. Well, we we said we would get into uh, what is in a rich topic, and I did spend time on that. So when I, if you want, and we can start digging into this. I've put it all on the on the Google Doc. Right. So it's from uh, that's part. Yeah, I've selected the first line. So if you go to my position, you should be able to see what I've written. It's not that much. It's just starting point, a seed. Right. Sorry, um, maybe you can screen share. I think it's going to make it easier. If, uh, but but first, Timothy, can you confirm? Is that what you want to talk about? Like continuation of um, yesterday's topic, or? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. So what do we have? No, that um, I'm I'm compiling right now. <laughs> My computer's been Where's compiling for the last half hour or so. So <laughs> running, if I turn off Zoom, video or something, it, you know. Running Zoom and compiling yeah. simultaneously. I did some some things. I think one of our previous meetings I was compiling. I think the compile time was times three or times four. It's horrible. Uh, do, it doesn't do, work. Do, do you use Nice? Uh, do you have, uh, are, are you are you on are Windows or some Unix C platform? Yeah, I'm on um, Mac. Mac. So you, you're aware yeah. of Nice, the Unix command Nice? Uh, no. No. It's you. For example, you can say Nice make, and it will do the make with lower priority. 
so that it won't interfere as much with Zoom. For example. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm doing a, a brew install and it's doing a make. I don't know if you can do nice brew install. Brew install nice. You could nice anything. You can nice anything. Okay. Uh, process okay. level. And, and you can oh, even you, you can even re-nice an existing process. Re-nice minus 10 process ID. And then you make yeah. it nice after the fact. Uh, and yeah, it, I was isn't nice it subjective. Maybe now, nice so. as if it's done quicker, yeah. <laughs> Talking what? about uh, ambiguous naming of nice. Like, isn't nice that it's done quicker? <laughs> no, nice means that it's nice to other processes. Uh, it's, more nice. it's, it's more cooperative. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is true. I mean, the reason why builds take up so much, they, they use up all cores, right? Like with parallel builds and... and yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to make minus... Well, eight, I guess, is the number of processor plus or minus one is what most people use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anywho. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's actually start. Uh, so I don't know what's the minutes mark here, but if there's editing, it should be here. Eight past five. Excellent. Uh, yeah, but we didn't start at the hour either. So in the recording, it'll be. Oh. Ah, whatever it's 56 probably 10 minutes okay so what's part of a rich topic uh first uh, we're speaking about immutability there's an immutable payload and mutable calculated state and it's about deciding what's part of the payload and what's part of the state and anything that changes the definition should be part of the payload and that's not some not that's not always obvious because new things around the definition sometimes change the definition because the moment you're aware of that it changes your concept of what the thing's about. But on the other hand, you don't want to put too much into payload because then you get into too many up update cascades and in some cases circular update cascades. So in particular, you don't want to put links and backlinks in the same payload. Um, oh, wow. I'm very confused. There is an immutable payload, but some definitions change the payload. If the some relations, some relations should be embedded in the payload because they change. Okay. The relations change, and in, in which way? I think you're again. I think you're overloading the term immutable here. Immutable conceptually or immutable from a data modeling perspective? Because it seems like Both. all this, you can drop immutable here, I think. What, what is? Uh, both. Uh, it's okay, immutable. How, how, can it, how can the payload be immutable if changing a relation changes the payload? Well, what it is means it the I think same? is talking about payload? like that, that definitional claims. Is this like definitional claims versus? other claims about something that are that's a that's a perfectly valid example okay what i mean okay good point what i mean here by changing the payload meaning i'll create a new topic for this with the relationship embedded i'll mark the old one as re, uh, replaced by in the state of course because i can do it in the payload and i'll create i'll create an upgrade relationship okay that's what i mean by changing the payload here um, there was a lot of implied things that I didn't read into, but okay. <laughs> no, but you're you're absolutely right. That's uh, change the definition and should be part of the payload. Already clearer. And also, is a topic the same in the definition? Yeah, the What's topic part of a rich is as topic? above. Rich topic as above, yes. I, I'm I right didn't now, read that prior to the meeting, so maybe we need to go over that. Uh, okay, uh, topic as discussed yesterday, rich topic as a topic that is not a simple topic that is not just a string of text, more than a string of text. It's visible right now. Let me open the doc. It's, this is pretty much what we went over yesterday. I did rephrase according to our, and I made it a bit, I made the boundary between the definitions. Did you have the, the rich topics one yesterday? Yes, I had it, okay. I had it. I one spoke million, of- One million, two 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 million, two
So what's an enriched topic, really? That's the question you were asking, I think. So you're going to delve into the structure now? Well, we're delving into structure. That's the whole thing, okay. yes. Um, tick, tick, tick. OK. Uh, some relations that change the definition should be part of an updated payload. In particular, if A is a component of B, that must be in the B payload. Uh, also. What is that the relation or B or what the, is the, that? A, A is the component, like the example is Paris is nice. Paris is a component of the claim Paris is nice. Uh, if uh, I say Paris is the capital of France, as part of the definition of Paris, then I must so have France. A must A must be in the B payload is what you're writing. That refers to A. Right. Yeah. All, all components of B must be part of B's payload. Because yeah. the, the index code reference that here is highly ambiguous. Oh, uh, yeah, that was written fast, but let me refine that. Uh, so A must be in the all B components of B. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, A is a component of B, A must be in the B payload, is what you're writing. Oh, the relationship, exactly, which is something different. Yes, which points to A. Uh, you're absolutely right. That was ambiguous. Thank well, you. Well, it still is right now. I'm, I'm not certain. And also, are we delving into data molding now then, or is it still on a conceptual level? Yeah, I guess it's in between, but uh, I want to be clear that a lot of that, no, I think it's, okay, the question here, and it's, it's, it's a bit in between, to be honest, uh, is what is a definition? What, how do we define concepts, claims, and so on? And how do we distinguish, I mean, that's what Tim started saying, the definitional uh, properties from empirical properties. And how do we know that this is part of the core definition, meaning if this changes, uh, we're not speaking about the same thing, the definitions changed. Or at least uh, we want to know that the definitions change. Does that make sense? Oh, well, what do you mean by change? That, that there's new interpretations of the definition or refinements or? Okay, um, valid question. Okay, I have a definition of- Because have, nowhere, I, in, nowhere in, your, uh, in your previous terminology did you talk about changing things, right? You introduced refinements. Yes, that's in, correct. In, but, but that's correct, that's correct. But changing, I did say, no, 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 no. Uh, if there's, okay, fair enough. When I say change, of course, it's all immutable. But what I mean is, yes, there's a refinement uh, and there's a clarification, maybe. Clarifications and refinements often coincide. And, um, oh, sorry, sorry, narrowing, not the refinement, the narrowing. Yeah. Um, and the, What will often happen when there's narrowing is that the topic will be found to be ambiguous. Say, so, okay, so say so I have a, a definition. I say mammals are um, defined by uh, producing milk, okay, uh, for their offsprings. Uh, that's my initial definition of mammals. Let's go with an example. And then uh, I find that, and otherwise they're vertebrates, let's say. Um, and suppose vertebrates is defined and I'm not going back on that. Um, and then I find another vertebrate that produces some substance that is used to feed the animals, but it's not milk for some reason. And there's you know, a valid reason why we can say this is not milk. And, why this is not endangering the definition of mammals. So I would come up with a, ref a narrower definition yeah, of a different mammal. Narrowing. Yeah, a different narrowing saying, by the way, uh, mammals are, they produce milk for the children where milk is defined by these characteristics. In, in, the, in your, it's interesting that you say a narrower because I don't think it is narrower, but you're changing it. Yeah, well, I'm, I am changing it. And that means at this point, there's two narrowings and the original definition becomes ambiguous. 
because yeah, the original, you started you started from nothing you started from a one topic i started with one topic so which what is... you're essentially suggesting is if you want to do this operation you're talking about right now yeah. you need to introduce a an underlying new broader topic first a broadening no and no, then introduce no. A new... okay. no 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 i'm saying the original the original topic which was mammals with imprecise milk say yeah a and then i'm being a bit careful and say okay here's mammal with a more careful definition of milk but doesn't and, that contradict the previous one it's yeah, absolutely that's where i'm getting uh and there's another and by the way here are vertebrates that do this other kind of milk which is not about mammals and hence this original definition now has two narrow wings and hence is ambiguous right and that and that's why i can say it's been replaced by two definition which one which happens to use the same term the other the other animals are whatever and uh and so this is a way in which the definition of mammal has been replaced but the topic the original topic which was ambiguous and which was supposed to define mammals is now uh ambiguous has two narrow wings which are don't have necessarily a useful superclass i mean they have vertebrate but the, the useful superclass is not supposed to be used with the same term as either of them and so there it's a real ambiguity. okay so it, i'll think short what you're saying is if the topic is ambiguous because yes. that was already defined in your terminology about yes yes yeah. yes 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 absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely uh so is that clearer here when i say because we started from that right the 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 um, if a compo it, oh, that, that by the way is what i mean by updating or changing a definition it's i'm declaring a definition ambiguous and there happens to be another non-ambiguous with the same term and that means a diff the go-to definition of that term is not the same anymore. Yeah, I mean, this is purely linguistic, but I, I wouldn't write must be in D because then you're hinting at data modeling, I would say is part of, or is considered part of the B payload. I understand what you mean. So the B payload is includes- yeah, There's a. also the question of your definition of go-to, the go-to is, you know, it's handy. Yes, there's, there, it's not always <clears throat> unique. It's not always unique, just as- uh, Go-to is contextual. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but I mean, it, in the dictionary, often for a word, you'll have entry one, entry two, entry three, right? Multiple entries for a, for a word, same thing. But, but the, the idea is to remove the ambiguous ones and so that you only look at the non-ambiguous ones. So you remove the ambiguous ones from consideration. So if you had one that was accepted, becomes ambiguous through multiple narrowings, then, and one of the narrowings is also accepted for the original term, then you could say that the term is now pointing to the second, to the new narrower definition. That's one way of doing redefinition without mutation. Uh, but this is, but terms are always highly ambiguous. I mean, the, the question is, you use the interpretation to go from terms to topics and ideally an unambiguous topic. And if one of your originally unambiguous topics becomes ambiguous, that means you need to reinterpret the term to choose the new non-ambiguous topic. And all that was said above. Um, Okay, so back to what's part of the payload. What's part of the... So let me try to paraphrase all this because I'm not happy with the language here, but I think I understand what you're saying. You're simply saying if a topic is composed of other topics and the topics it is composed of turn out to be ambiguous, it's an indication that the original topic that is composed of the ambiguous topics needs to be reinterpreted. Is that what you're saying? That is true for any relationship 
which is part of the payload. And, uh, and why do payload matter here? Oh, 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 the, 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 the core, the core of the definition. I did say the payload is like the core of the definition. What? The definition of the word topic, or no? What does that, the core of the definition mean? That's why I originally. That's that's the first. Fair enough. I uh, what I mean is, here the the rich topic is seen as a definition of a concept, right? Forget that it's also associated with the word, but it's okay. It's that's why I ask. It's, it's definition and synonym of topic, or uh, yes, up to a point. Well, of rich topic, it's yeah. not not any string, and that's why I was reluctant to put stripped symbols into topics because here I mean those topics which are really concepts and not just arbitrary strings of text. And uh, that's a non ambiguous that was the idea. distinction between symbol and topic. Yes, exactly. Well, I mean, we did we did say some simple topics are can be can have only text in their definition. Yeah, but what yes. text? Not not text that can that refers to a concept or tries to be a concept. Yeah, yeah. I thought kinda. your distinction between symbol. I thought your main and only distinction between symbol and concept was exactly that. That symbol yes. could be totally meaningless, and topic wouldn't be. It would rep try to represent the concept. The 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 that is correct. But it's. I feel you've been pushing me towards conflating symbol and topic, so I'm reiterating the distinction. Uh, yeah, I didn't read the update, so I, I just have the the stuff from yesterday in mind. So maybe yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 no, it's not that profoundly different. But I, I'm still, I'm still struggling. I'm still actually tempted to conflate them, but that would change the whole vocabulary. But we need this distinction between topics, which act as definition, and in particular, all rich, unambiguous topics are supposed to act as definitions of concepts. Okay. And what does that mean to act as definitions? It means that from reading and understanding the topic, you're supposed to have a good idea of what the concept's about. It's supposed to evoke the concept in as unambiguous a manner as practical. So you're saying topics can be ambiguous. Yes, that, that's what we discussed yesterday. Yeah. And you're saying that definitions aren't ambiguous. So can it be say, uh, that you can say that definitions are non-ambiguous topics? I'm saying, well, it's always aspirational, right? But uh, each it is, topic, but if, if one second, certain... okay, let me rephrase, let me rephrase. Each proper topic, uh, let's avoid meaningless sentences, is an attempt at defining a concept. It may be a more or less successful attempt depending on how ambiguous it is. Uh, but even ambiguous topics are an attempt at definition, it's just a failed attempt at definition. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we can say what's in the topic structure is. What is a topic the, structure? Because I think you're referring to relations to other topics right now, or not. That's, I'm trying to draw this distinction between what's within the core and what is around it. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So the core of the topic structure, you know, there's, when you do a relation, is it in the around mutable part or is it in the core immutable part? Well, when fact, when I add so a relation, speaking, whenever I use conceptual language, when you talk about relationships, it's outside of the concept you define. So, like if you define a word topic, which you already did, then you talk about relations between topic and other entities. It's outside of the definition. Of the uh, topic. Uh, uh, in that okay, sense, but, I think you already defined it in in what you wrote above. No, and and, and here I disagree with that. I'm saying uh -huh. some of the relations are structural, and adding a relation means, oh, by the way, the the topic now it's for some relations, and that's what I'm trying to distinguish. For some relations, the relation is structural, and that means if I'm adding a relation, it means that topic has become obsolete and needs to be replaced by one which incorporates the relation in the immutable core. Yeah, but see that the confusion here is that you, what you're talking about. You, okay, you're using ambiguous definitions <laughs> of topic here. In one instance, it points to this one thing. In other instances, it points to topic and relations to other topics, which no, is I'm confusing. 
No, 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 no. Okay, that's a, that's an interpretation. I, I, okay, I understand what you're saying. You're saying that if a topic is ambiguous, which you can derive by looking at whether or not there's refinements or whatever, like the, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. definition of ambiguous that you have written above, which I liked, then it's not a good definition. And the definition here is some type of intent of something that you want to use probably to compose other topics out of, because yes. then you have well-defined topics that are not ambiguous in turn. So I, yeah. I think I get all of this. Good. And what, I, that... what I'm saying now is uh, we agree that, for example, the narrowing relation may introduce ambiguity on a topic. And that means uh, we want people who used to point to that topic to now point with the, to the improved narrower, one of the improved narrower topics, mm -hmm. right? I'm saying this is true of other relations. There's other relations that have this property that there are reason to replace the topic. Which are? And that's the list I'm going through right now. Okay. I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, I'm saying part of is definitely in the list. If I'm saying uh, this concept is part of the topic definition, then the topic definition is more precise now that I've effectively made the component, sorry, not part of component of, uh, now that I've explicitly singled out a component. It's a clearer definition at the very least. Maybe right. it's a... What, okay, you know, again, what is the topic definition? The topic, the topic internal structure, the topic as a definition. It's, it's not definition of topic. It's topic as definition. <laughs> Which means, because that's a circular definition, what is topic as definition? Topic. Rich topic. Uh, it's it, no topic. Topic. I'm just, definition is just a lens through which to view topics. It's not a separate object. It's not a separate property. Yeah, but the topic viewed as a definition, under, thought of as a definition. So a definition is a, is a topic viewed as a definition? Yes. Okay. How, where, when, and how do you want to use this? As a matter of emphasis? Uh, I could, we could always use the word topic or, uh, and I'll, or always use the, the word definition. Maybe it would avoid this conversation, but I think both play a role in understanding. I'm just realizing they're also play a role in misunderstanding. <laughs> I'm. Yeah, well, you're I'm, introducing a new term and I'm wondering where to fit the term into all the other and, and I said you introduced clearly, yesterday and you're using yeah. new language to introduce new language, which is not helping describe what you aim to do with this new term definition but, or how I should model that or map that or understand in my brain. I, okay, but I said about 20 times now, consider them synonyms. That's it. <laughs> consider top definition as synonym to topic. Okay. Okay. Then, then, it, then your point is? My point is I'm trying to see what relationships are part of the topic structure or definition structure, same thing, core of the definition, same thing. But you have defined topic before. So yes, yes. your definition of topic did not include relationships. You talked about relationships between topics. I said and topics. No, 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 and, and that's, that's exactly, no, no, sorry. I'm saying very clearly, I spoke of relationship between topics. That does not mean that the topics are not part of the structure. Some are external, some are internal. I'm trying to determine that now. Part, part of which structure? The content of the topic structure, the topic structure. What's in the topic? Isn't that the question? What's in the topic? I mean, Topic is a data structure. I said the data, the content of the data structure is left undefined for now. Now we're trying to define it. What goes in the topic? What goes in the topic structure? I'm saying among the relations, some will be will remain outside, some will go inside. That's all I'm saying. I don't see why okay, this so is you, so complicated. You are, you are doing data modeling. I am doing data modeling. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and in which which language and what what are you modeling it in? Natural language right now. <laughs> 
And, 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 but I did say it's also conceptual because I'm also distinguishing which terms are definitional core versus external. Yeah, can you scroll up the definition of topic? Sure. An immutable data structure. So immutability is a part of the definition of topic. Correct. So if you say relations, you want to include, but again, the question is, are you talking about data modeling or conceptually? I'm telling you, if you're talking conceptually, it's impossible to have this working definition of topic, an immutable data structure, and say that the relations are included in this immutable data structure, in this topic. If you include them in the topic- Hard disagree. Okay. <laughs> okay, because this is for me a conceptual definition. Topic can literally be replaced in any sentence where topic is used with an immutable data structure. You're saying, right. should, should the link to other topics be included in the topic? Replace that. Should the link in the immutable data structure be included in the immutable data structure? I would argue no, because the links change. You can add new links. Does it, where does it go into? Not in the immutable data structure. So this is a, a, a contradictory definition if you would introduce it as such. On the other hand, if you're talking about data modeling and you're talking about representing a topic as a class, which might maybe have internally an immutable data structure and also relationships to other topics, sure, I'm with you. But you need to choose whether you're talking data modeling or... No, 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 no that, that's a misunderstanding. Uh, okay, I have an immutable thing, which let's say it doesn't contain any link yet. I'm adding a link. Okay, now if it's a, some links will fall in the mutable state outside the, the, the immutable data structure, that's fine. Those we don't care about, they're computed. Some links I'm saying, this is really affecting the definition. That means I want that link to be part of the data, of the data structure. Yeah, yeah, so that you're talking about composition. I will replace, I will create a new version of the topic, a new immutable version that incorporates the link explicitly and say, by the way, this is, this is clearer, this is narrower, this is yeah. better than the and other one that did not incorporate the, the link. What? Sorry? It, it, it's, it, it's composition. Yeah, it is composition. Composition is included, anything else isn't. That, that's, yeah. that's a traditional, yeah. Yeah, it is Definement composition. Definement wouldn't be included, uh, narrowing wouldn't be included, but composition would be included. Yes. 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 With you. And now we can go, and I said composition among others. Uh, so that's what I was going through. I'm trying to, yes. Uh, composition, definitely it's part of. Uh, if the composition, if the component relationship came from an adornment, that's also in the payload. That's also part of the inner structure. If A refines B, it's part of A's payload. I'm a refinement of this. I was defined as a refinement of this. Now, if A, if it comes afterwards, then again, we'll want to update and create an A prime which contains a refinement. So I wonder, so I get it, but I wonder, is it a data modeling concern? Is it a conceptual concern? Because I wonder what, what's the benefit of Store well, conceptual that, that, considering okay, the backlink the, the, in uh, the, the not the backlink here, the link only. The backlink the back is in the state didn't... explicitly. Back yeah, links, exactly. The, the, the backlink doesn't belong. That that's a pure implementation note. Okay, it depends what they mean by backlink. But yeah, so you're saying that if something refines something else, the thing being refined is part of the payload or the concept essentially. It's, it, yeah. Now, this is not, again, not always true. If I define the refinement after the fact, then I should definitely take note of that. Exactly. That's why I would argue conceptually for me, it doesn't make sense to say that because it precludes using language such, such as drawing refinements between two existing topics. So for me, conceptually, it's much more useful to say that the refinement is outside of the two topics. The refinement is a relationship between two topics. That, that's the language I would use. 
And, and what I'm saying is uh, I'll create an A prime in that case because what, what I'm, okay, what, what I'm saying here, and that's really important is if A is a refinement of B, and maybe that's a mistake in this case, I'm beginning to have doubts about this one. No, refinement, refinement, that's correct, not narrowing, refinement. If it's a subclass, I want to say, well, this is a subclass of that, and that's essential to its definition. Again, that was not narrowing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think, yes, I see why, because it, it's more akin to the composition nature of them, yeah. Yes. So yeah, narrowing would be the relationship and refinement would be more akin to composition. Yes, yes. I think I can follow. Yes. And now distinctions, because that's really an important case. I'm saying I have A and B are distinct using this property. Like, and, and probably I'll have both B, you know, A and B are subclasses of C, the refinements of C, then it should be part of both the A and B payload. Saying, you know, A, A and B are both kinds of C, but, and they're distinct because one has the some property and the other doesn't. And the distinction says proper, true property P, I should say. I'll have hey, the- You didn't really go into materialize or describing these distinguishing things in the yeah it's it's below stuff above it's like one it's below okay uh, so d, is, is d also a topic is a distinction a topic yeah what is it's that? a I mean, it's a relation it's a relation that happens to be materialized and as such as a topic um i'm saying for example, I'm saying the difference between Felidae and Canidae under mammals is the uh, presence of, I don't know what bone. Uh, that's how we know that it's a feline and not a canid. And uh, yes. And that would be part of both the feline and canid definitions. So to which degree is this not this essentially the same as saying that it's composed of, as in it points to that definition? Well, I'm, I'm making a list of what it can be composed of. Clarifications are still so different, different ways of doing composition. And yeah. one of them is this, yeah. Yeah. Clarifications are state only, uh, not part of the definition. If A interprets B, and you'll remember that ambiguity and narrowing depend on the interpretation relation, that is state only. So the equivalence, for, equivalence class representative is part of the state, being ambiguous is an. What, what is state only? Part of the immutable core. It's not a reason to create a new immutable updated versions. I said the state. I was contrasting at the very beginning. There's a mutable payload and an implicit mutable calculated state. State only meaning it doesn't affect the core, doesn't affect the payload. A calculated state. Yeah, possibly cache materialized, but that's implementation implementation details. But can you can give an example of that sentence clarification of state only? Like given a clarification in uh, I'm not sure what you want. Uh, th th that is not clear enough, the implicit mutable calculator. What is a clarification? Oh, clarification. There's a clarification relation, right? It's also a relation. But there's a, it's a, there's a relation between two topics saying this is the same concept, but defined in a clearer way. That's relational. That does not affect the definition. Topic, yeah. Yeah, and it does not affect the core of the topic. Of neither topics. Correct. Okay. Okay, so that's about which relations fit in the state. And which uh, Otherwise, the payload can consist of a short label, natural language definition, formal language definition, usually in the form of, and then it depends. If it's an entity, we'll have reference to a broader topic T and definitional predicates 
which are probably the same as distinctions below. Uh, and that is now. That's just a no I was writing, but decided it's a no. And for a claim, we'll want frame references and for each frame, a set of entities with a topic reference for each of them. And if there are many frames, we have to express logical relation between frames and entity unification between frames. Um, so basically this is saying this is about formal definition. Now, I don't want this to be a closed list. Like some, somebody will come up, Tim, you're muted. Okay, uh, there may be multiple formal languages. There may be multiple, I did, I did make Uh, yes, sound is dropping out. He's typing. He's typing. Yeah. Talking. Well, yeah, when I'm tapping, my sound drops out. Sorry. So you don't hear the clacking. And that's a bit too aggressive. Apologies. So, yeah, I, all of those are possibilities. It's not a closed list. I think part of the, the, the reply I posted uh, after our meeting yesterday was about the necessity of this having to be a closed list, I think, to reword. I don't know whether you've had a chance to read it. I, uh, me... Like if, if it's not a closed list, if we don't agree and decide on which relations are allowed and which concrete instances belong to these endpoints of these relationships and what is allowed to go in what, I think essentially it's you're just discussing like some overly generic data model similar like you can use firebase to store anything and yeah you can store knowledge um, topics into this thing I, I, very much like all the language you use for me you're describing user stories as a developer i want to model knowledge relations because i want to implement a claim repository for example and i want to model claims whereas if you want to create a system that supports claims and claim relations, you're going to have to restrict all of these relations and the subset of formal language that's allowed for it to be useful. Because otherwise, what are you going to do if you run into instances and relations that you don't know or don't know how okay. to deal with? And but, I think that's a core distinction between you always focus on, I want to support modeling knowledge. And I think a lot of the user stories that CDL is interested in is, I want to model certain kinds of knowledge. And for me, the two separate binary contexts, one I, being I, I, an implementation of the other. And I think it's also the difference in bounded context, noted and accepted. It's also the difference between saying, what do we need to define for a system versus what do we need to define for interoper an interoperability standard? But you, you uh, don't, that, that's my point. You don't can, you're not going to get interoperability between a, um, let's say uh, Wikidata that's modeled using this and a claim repository using this. Because if you don't agree on the concrete instances of what is an entity, which relationships are allowed between entities, can entities comprise other sub-entities, et cetera. If you don't specify which compositions are allowed, which refinements are allowed, what, um, et cetera. If you don't agree on that, you don't have interoperability. Yeah, sure, you have a common generic subset you can use to implement both. Just like you can use Firebase to implement whatever application, it doesn't mean that all applications built on Firebase are interoperable. I, I, okay, uh, I think I think the Firebase example is a bit extreme. Uh, I see what you're saying. It's not totally it's right. By it's analogy. Not totally wrong. No, it's yeah, but I'm 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 saying you're you're stretching the analogy. Uh, the the only interoperability. Let, let me let me answer let me answer a bit at length. You share. Let let me answer a bit at length. I think I agree with you that. When I say open list, I do agree that this there should be a list of, you know, these, for example, these entities have meaning and have to be shared meaning. Otherwise, we can't interpret at all. Uh, when I say open list, I can see somebody saying, you know, I want to declare an extension, and this is how I define meaning. You're free to ignore it if you don't have it. but I'm adding this extension. It's like IANA X something uh, in, in MIME types. Uh, 
I don't think that's wrong. Uh, that's what I mean by open so list. You're, okay, you're hinting at you do share a common subset, but you can add your own and ignoring them doesn't impact the compatibility. Right. I mean, it's still a big assumption because essentially any system that requires these specified types of relations to be interpreted, you're no longer going to be compatible with them, right? The, 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 and my, my second point is compatibility for what? If we have the interpretation relation, the interpretation, like suppose I get a topic from another system, which for me is gibberish because I, it happens to not use any of the common things and it's, you know, but I do know that it's, um, it's being declared as an alternative to one of my topics. Yeah, so the, the generic subset, the abstractions you share. So yes, the relationships you share, the refinement, the narrowing, but if you exactly. don't know what the topic is, narrowing of what, what are you, which use cases across systems are you supporting? I'm supporting the fact that I can look at claims about that topic, even though I don't understand it, I know it's equivalent to one of mine, which I do understand, it's enough. I can say those claims apply. Um, I can say, oh, here's an ambiguity declared. Again, I can't analyze the topic. I still know there's a problem. Now, of course, I want to look inside the topic and see, okay, how is it different, blah, blah, blah. And uh, maybe I want to translate the topic into the concepts I have, and maybe those will be common, those will be extensions. It shouldn't matter. What I'm saying is the relations define enough to handle a slew of use case, even if the topics were opaque, which there won't be because there's still a pretty important non-opaque subset. Well, the, the relations, the abstractions you shared, the, the abstractions hey, hey, hey. that work on the abstractions, but none of the specific cases. These are yeah. the ones that are supported. And those, I mean, this is not nothing saying here's. Uh, uh, but if you, if so, yeah, I, I, I think you can come up with use cases, but uh, not I, many, I think. Uh, I think many, but let's. The, 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 the question really is what's in. shared basis, okay. what's in the formal language is what is the formal language part of the shared basis. I think there should be a formal language in the shared basis. That's I don't what want I was hinting to... at, there needs to be, otherwise it's, it doesn't, if, and, and that shared subset of formal language you share should be all about supporting use cases. We do need in CDL things such as definitions. I agree. And but those are gonna be specific instances of topics and topics relations and, and there's going to be topics with specific structure we agree on which part is the constraint that's enforced by the cdl structure if you see it's the it's the the use cases on cdl that define the constraints of which topic relations and which specific formalisms of topics we are interested in okay and i'm claiming most of the use cases we have exist at the level of the relations and not even digging into the formal language. Now, I may be wrong about this, but that's the claim I'm making. For uh, ambiguity, I think you, you I, like I said, I really like that. Um, yeah, because refinements. So yes, if, if we do that, that is on a topic level and that means that you can even have interoperability in terms of pointing out ambiguities between systems that only agree on what a topic is regardless of agreeing on yeah so that far i'm with you yeah I'm yeah trying to and, visualize and, what that would look like it would be like cdl as a system uh, that that supports this common subset of abstractions and then uh, yeah, an and other system can point out ambiguities and if cdl wishes it could incorporate those but it could never display them for example it could just for example but but where i do agree you have a perfectly valid point is uh in the case of claims and arguments, we need to have basic notion. For example, the notion of premise and conclusion needs to be part of the common substrate. And, and I, did not, I did not get into that. And that's kind yeah. of vital. Even uh, also how like adornments, I think you added, I didn't read what it was, but I think that's also essential. The way you link from your payload to adornments and 
that that's an, a key component i think you cannot do without as part of the the base like the payload needs some type of way of pointing to subsets of that payload to be able to support an abstract notion of adornments that I support across different systems using this type of abstraction. Correct. Yeah, yeah, the adornments are part of the relations. And so, yeah, the uh, adornment format should absolutely be part of this spec. I agree with that. I, I didn't add the premise conclusion explicitly because for me it was part of a logical relation between frames, but making that explicit is certainly better <laughs> because that's certainly part of what we want to be. Um, the, 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 and it's true that when I say they're optional in the sense that um, I don't want to force people to have a formal def language definition, obviously. Uh, but even if they have a formal language definition, I don't want to force them to have a natural language definition and vice versa. Uh, but of course, ideally, it should have all of them. Uh, the, the, um, well, there's the, going to be a lot of, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of, I mean, I understand that all of this is possible. Um, but like a simple example would be, do we really want to, do we, does CDL really want a system where definitions can have definitions? Is that useful? Is that supporting user stories that the CDL wants to support? Do we want recursive definitions? And I mean, these are things that, yeah, sure, you can abstractly model that and it's easy. And But how are you going to render that? How are you going to support real user stories of people that just want to clarify a claim here? And that's, that's, that's an absolutely valid question. That's that's the real okay. Yeah. That, so whenever I it. say whenever I say it's super important that we talk about the specific user stories, that's what I mean. Like yeah. abstractly, I'm fully on board with yeah. This is an abstract underlying model that can probably be used as a data model to model it all. But on top of that data model, you're going to have constraints stemming from user stories. Yeah. And sometimes they might be purely practical considerations because doing full recursion on all of these concepts and coming up with a user interface that is able to render them or having humans that are able to comprehend them. There, yeah. there are limits there. Uh, and this is why it's important for topics to have a natural language short label so that we can include them in something else through the label. And it's even though the full description is not there. If it's a full description with tons of definitional predicates and this and that, they should, you don't need to render them every time you mention it as part mm. of the claim. If, if it's even possible to render these, is it going to be a short label at that point? You can ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, um, but that's, well, that, no, but that's distinct from the short label, right? I'm seeing a topic has many things, including a short label, including all these uh, definitions. No, but what, what's the short label of a topic with uh, with a hierarchy of, of 10 definitions, like a definition using five other definitions? What's the short label of that? It's whatever string of words you think conveys the idea. It's a label. It's not the full definition. Okay, so yeah, 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 okay, gotcha. So it would just be probably the highest level phrasing and not digging down into deeper definitions, for example. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point of distinguishing label and definition. It's like the in a dictionary entry, there's the word and there's a definition. So label is like the word, really. With all the ambiguity of the label. I should make that explicit. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I think I, I like most of this. It's similar to, I mean, you've, you've talked about these concepts many times before. I think I got most of them. Uh, like I wrote yesterday, I think that the main revelation for me was really how you define ambiguity. It's super useful. And like I said, I think we need to uh, pick that up in the glossary meetings because it's useful to have a definition of that 
thorny topic. We had the distinction between Paris <laughs> is useless ambiguity versus mammal might be well, well known. Animal, animal. Animal might be a useful abstraction, for example, or not. I mean, I like that. Um, but I think what will be useful for you is to think of the user stories on a CDL level. Yep, the, the, um, that, that's that, clearly that, the next that work, step, right? That work on these uh, abstractions. And it yep. would indeed be like uh, having some type of compatibility across different types of knowledge systems where you can still uh, yep. find refinements so that, and then my question is, so that what? So, so Wednesday is user stories. So I have assignment mm -hmm. for that. Now, yeah. and what I'm asking you is feel free to add to that. Like this is just me. That's almost, you know, brain dump uh, and a very short one at that. What do you see missing in there? This is just- Well, it doesn't a... dictate how to model definitions, <laughs> which was today's discussion. It doesn't say this is the one way that CDL will model definitions. You can do it in many different ways. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, that's again- what's missing. The, 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 but but that's, that is, a, for me, a separate question in the sense uh, the, among those possible ways which will be enabled by the interchange format, which one will CDL choose? But I do think that for CDL, it will probably mandate all of these, except probably the last one. Uh, and that's it really. Uh, and, but it did mandate, you know, among those relations, some of these have to be part of the state. Uh, for me, that was really important. Uh, I know we argued a lot about what it meant to add relations to immutable state, but for me, this was fundamental work. What no, was... No, I get that composition, like definitions indeed would be part of the immutable state, if, if that's what you meant, I, I agree. And really the most important, and as far as I'm concerned, you could have a definition that is totally lacking a formal language definition. It's just a label and all kinds of relations. And that might be, it's not as powerful as we want, but it's, I, I'm making the claim that it will be usually good enough to distinguish the topic from alternate meanings or, or, or to convey what the topic is about. The whole making a formal language definition for me is less important to most use cases than establishing distinctions. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a claim. You're asking me what goes in the thing. The distinctions go in the thing. That's fundamental. They are the main, the most important part of the definition. And I have a hard stuff. <laughs> but so, yeah, try to formulate user stories and in terms of definitions. Yep. Uh, and how that overlaps with the terminology you use here. With, is that then a, a composition or a distinction you're introducing? Yeah, I think I can use some more clarity there. Fair enough. Cool. Talk to you next time. Have a nice weekend. You too. See you.